Caution. I am not a trained engineer, I'm not a professional. None of the techniques I apply here may necessarily be correct. And I may even say or do plain wrong things in this video. And I'm making these videos to let you take part in my learning experience and maybe help people who are facing similar issues with the devices as I have. Enjoy the show! Alright guys, just a quickie today. Or at least I hope it'll be a quickie. This is a um, Panasonic AG7355 and the problem that this has is there's no video output. There's absolutely nothing on the video output and well it briefly spikes in voltage and that's what's causing the widescreen. If I click play It'll play it. There's no tracking. No hi-fi. It thinks it's an SVHS cassette. Control pulse is a pro process at least. Nothing there. Uh, it's gonna be very hard to troubleshoot this because these are all sort of separate modules here. That go in their own slots. Unfortunately there are no extension cables for this. I could make my own, but that would be an insane amount of effort to do. I can swap some modules over from the 7350 that I have over here, which uh, is completely working. I already checked these flat flex cables here, they're all fine, so it must be something else. But since this is such a high end unit, there's just so much wiring going off everywhere, and I only have the service manual in digital form, which is barely helpful. This is the adjustment section that I printed out way back when I got these machines and aligned them. Um, I've gone through this plenty of times, uh, but the alignment is obviously not important here. As Mercy looks at you judgingly for breaking yet another VCR. Here's the service manual is a block diagram section of the video 3 board there's three video boards there's video 1 2 and 3 i think 2 does most of the processing modulation demodulation i believe 3 is what actually adds all the difference or switches between all the relevant signals and then uh, i believe the character displays also uh, added here somewhere but what do you call these connectors anyway I have no idea what you would call those. I probably should Google this uh, part number and find out. Here's a little service tip for everybody who owns a Panasonic SVHS VCR of an older generation. There's this ceramic uh, hybrid IC here, and it has four surface mount electrolytics. Obviously, this is not the professional way to replace those, but you know, I'm not selling these machines, so I can do whatever I want. So I just tacked on these normal electrolytics, but those are uh, those surface mount electrolytics to just leak and corrode everything, and they ruin your picture at least in SVHS mode. So let's plop this module back in. As we can see, there is no action here at all. When I try to uh, bring up the display, the heads-up display, nothing happens. So that's another thing that I need to check out. The power supply was overhauled by me quite a while ago, but unfortunately I seem to have lost the metal cover during my move. So that's the thing, I'm just wiggling some cables around to see if I can find something that makes the video output twitch. I haven't touched this machine other than loading it in the car and unloading it while going here. Let's see... Another servicing tip for you people. Roughly in this area, the control pulses are processed and there is a couple of capacitors here that are prone to leaking and that will end up causing your control pulses to eventually not be recognized and your machine won't have tracking. Um, what you want to check is this set of capacitors if anything goes wrong. This one is purple and it looks very different to the others and was the only one leaking. In this machine it already had leaked and control pulses weren't working at all and the machine had no tracking and replacing this capacitor cured the fault. This machine it had the same problem, but the capacitor wasn't that leaky yet. Like there was some corrosion, but nothing serious, and the machine still worked fine. Last but not least, way down there, 
This is a 1 microfarad 400 volt capacitor. Basically, it helps the power supply start swinging around, you know. And um, and that capacitor is notorious for losing its value after a while, and which it does on pretty much all the Panasonic switch mode power supply designs. And if it has lost enough value, then the power supply simply won't start anymore. So as a preventative measure, just replace that capacitor. Right, so I've been working on this a bit. There is no 12 volts on this connector. It originates from this IC right here, IC1. It gets 13 volts in, but has no output. And in fact, when I touch this circuit board, my finger burns to a crisp. So I do believe that there might be something catastrophically wrong with this. Uh, I'm gonna take the board out. Actually check out when I measure the resistance between the 12 volt output and ground. That's uh, dead short right there. As I mentioned in my last video, make a note of where everything goes. So that's what this tiny clip is for. The short's still there when I unplug this uh, regulator board so I'm I have the hope that this condition didn't entirely kill the board or the IC at least I gotta investigate and check every single thing that's connected to this 12 volt rail ah this is an awful fault I really don't wanna I really hoped it wouldn't be a power issue but who would have thought that out that the whole machine working fine except for video output uh, is a power supply fault. That's a bit um, That's a bit unfortunate Because it means that I have to unscrew this main board that it means I have to unscrew all of the modules and uh, This is just awful All right, that's just about the weirdest thing ever. I've unplugged all of the modules I've unplugged power to the mother to the system control board and the short's still there, and I have no idea how the hell that can be. I imagine that while moving, something may have shifted while driving over a bump or something that could have caused something here to short, but I don't see how the backplate would do that. This is so strange. <laughs> the short's still there. I don't know what the hell is going on. The short went away after I unplugged the front panel. Now I need to go to the front panel to see which pins the 12 volt rail resides on on this board. Well okay, if that wasn't just the strangest fault. After I couldn't find a short on the front panel, I just put it back together and I got a nice 12 volt output. Which means that even though it's been shorted and slowly burning away for hours, the 12 volt regulator on this little power board actually didn't break. That's quite astonishing, to be honest. But hey, I mean, I can just put it back together now and see if I get a video output. Well, would you look at that? I've got a picture again. Let's see if it plays. Well, I'm getting a uh, nothing. Well, let's... Oh, oh God. <laughs> well, if you don't plug the head amp in, you're not gonna get a picture. That's pretty obvious. <laughs> Alright, that should work better. We got a picture, it's in black and white. I'm not entirely sure why. And for that we're gonna take a look at the chroma path of this machine. And the problem is that diagnosing all of that is pretty hard because I can't get to these modules while they're plugged in obviously to, to scope anything or whatever. I actually figured out the cause of um, of the black and white. It was actually a bad trace on the video 2 board. Uh, if we look at this uh, block diagram over here, chroma was coming into this chip, it was coming out of this chip. It came to Q12, it came to IC7, it came out of IC7, came out of Q22, did not make it to... Uh, did not make it to the uh, connector on the bottom. And there was a trace that was uh, cut apparently when I um, put this machine together last time uh, after doing work on it. When installing the metal can of this TCD module. You can see over there this metal can. 
You may ask yourself, what's the difference between this AG7350 that I have here and the AG7355 that I have here? Well, you may notice this button, Digital Frame Memory. It has an additional board here, and I'm going to show you what that is. I'll hit the pause button, and you'll get a still frame. Now, the still frame is pretty good. There's barely any noise in the picture, but but it will never be a perfect frame because it's still analog the video the picture is still coming from the head drum that's rotating what they did in this machine was i'm gonna hit the digital memory button what you get what you end up is this perfect digital still frame it's not a still field like it is in normal analog mode it's a full still frame this is full frame, you'll see it will. it's a bit jumpy because it's displaying field 1 and field 2 like it would be on an interlaced picture. I'm gonna select field 1, perfectly stable, field 2, perfectly stable. So that's that. I'm gonna shut down this machine and take this board out and show you actually. Here we have the board, it has a lot of memory chips on it to store the full frame. It has all the logic that's associated with it and it has a lot of adjustments for this. I've never touched this board because it worked perfectly and because I'm not even gonna pretend to understand what the hell is going on here. But this is uh, pretty nifty. Now the thing is, does this mean that there's a TBC inside here? No. No it does not. Even though it would have made sense if you go through, through, through the trouble of implementing digital still frames, uh, of putting in memory um, to hold a full frame, then the association between that and a time-based corrector is obviously not that far-fetched. But that's not what they do here. This is simply for digital still frames. And what this was used for, um, this uh, machine came out of a physics laboratory where it was used to capture the still frames of measurement equipment to, uh, you know, to document measurements. This is precisely what this unit was intended for. And, um, you know, that kind of thing, also medical imaging. Um, and the digital still frames just help immensely with that because if you do that on a normal machine without digital still frames, you are going to get picture noise even if your machine is perfectly calibrated. Right, right, so now the problem is, in trying to find this fault, I uh, actually turned a few of the pots on this video tube board, so I'm going to have to do an alignment of this machine. I'm not going to show that because it's actually quite boring, but I've done this many times because I've owned three of these machines. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, good enough. I'm gonna use this machine um, as a backup. I can still do uh, family videos and stuff uh, with low importance on picture quality on this machine. But I'm gonna use my 7350s. Anyway, that's it for this quick episode of Vintage Tech. Th thank you so much for your time, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.